Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox Graphics and we are back with another video. This time we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this kind of virtual embers in After Effects. And I'll tell you right off the bat that this project file was sent to me by Erica Anderson. You could find her at Erica of Anderson on Twitter and Instagram. She does daily loops and they're all really awesome. But um, everyone kind of has their own style. And so I'm not gonna duplicate hers exactly, but I'm gonna show you the techniques that she used to get to where she was. So really big appreciation to her. If you create anything with this, style, be sure to tag me as well as her on Instagram or Twitter. That way we could both check them out. My project file will be posted onto our Patreon account if you're curious to follow along from there. Anyways, let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects here and get started. So I'm going to start by creating a new composition and a thousand by a thousand, maybe two seconds um, is good. It's going to be really short, a really short loop. And I'm going to create a layer new solid. And this kind of pale color is automatically selected because I had done this tutorial once before, but I like using a pale color for this first layer. Hit OK. And now I'm going to search for something called CC Mr. Mercury, which I will drop onto this layer. And so let me just show you what it does. It basically just is a particle generator, but the particles are kind of blobby like mercury. So we definitely want to change those settings. Um, this looks cool, but it's not what we're looking for. I want to increase the radius on the X direction to fill my composition, as well as the Y radius. So it seems like about there, maybe 90 is the height that I want. I can always adjust those later. I'm going to make sure my producer is in the center of the composition, which it is. The velocity I can leave the same. The birth rate I might change to two. The longevity one second, because this composition is only going to be one second long. And I could adjust the gravity resistance an extra later. This will, I'll show you what it, what it looks like after, but you can see that those are not really going to make a big difference. The, what will make a big difference though is what animation style you choose. So I believe Erica used Vortex. She may have used Twirl or Twirly. Um, I can't really remember, but I'm going to use Vortex. Um, fire also looks cool. Really all of these look cool. They all just look different. So I'll select Fire and you could see that it looks like it's starting from the bottom and, and rising up or vortex, which is kind of the same, but just a little bit different. The blob influence, I could leave it at 100. That'll help me adjust the blob size later. But what will really help me adjust the blob size is the birth size, which I could do 0 0.005. I want it to start fairly small. I'm sorry, 0 0.05. And then the death size, I could just put zero. So you can see here now what this looks like. And obviously, if I adjust the X, I can make it tighter or wider. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. And let's see what happens when we change it to fire. So you can see there, it, it, it very similar, but it's just slight changes. Twirly, you'll see, will look slightly different. Wow, that looks kind of crazy. We're just going to go to Vortex for right now, and maybe we'll adjust that later. So that's pretty much done. Up next, what I want to do is I want to create some keyframes for the birth and death rate. So now we're going to enter the looping stage. So this is our base animation. We can come here, adjust this later, adjust the settings. It will make massive changes later on down the line. It's kind of like the butterfly effect, except for instead of butterflies, we're dealing with mercury balls. But the the, the, the idea is the same. Okay, so we'll just create a a keyframe here for the birth rate, which is at two, and then go to one second and set the birth rate to zero. Perfect. If I hit you on the keyboard, you can see my keyframes and you can see that it lasts two seconds and then it's gone. Okay. That's what I want. Now you need to be very mindful of the length of your composition and the length of your file and when your keyframes are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to name this base level two. And good rule of thumb is to name your files, your compositions. I'm going to select comp one, hit enter and name this base level one. Um, you can name these obviously, whatever you want, but I find, you know, sometimes you just want to find the base one, but the second one's kind of a base one, but it's not, um, you'll see what I mean in a second, but I will drag my base level one into this composition. And actually this composition, um, I'll shrink it later, but I'm going to duplicate this layer, control D and drag this one over to one second. 
Come to one second, hit N on the keyboard, and for some reason, I don't know why this happens, but it always gives you like one additional frame. I don't want that, I want it to be one second. And then I could right click this and go to trim comp to work area, and this should loop perfectly. And it does, right? So we could always jump back into our base one, adjust this setting to, let's say fire, come back here and it will still loop perfectly. So that looks pretty cool. Now, um, we can now start adjusting these gravities, resistance and stuff. Um, I think gravity was kind of cool, if I remember. I mean, it makes it pull up, but resistance is actually even cooler because it kind of holds the particles a little bit more in place, but that may be too much. You could add some extra. I think that'll give it a little bit of extra whirl, twirl to it. The resistance is too high. So that looks pretty cool, um, but of course you can change these settings all you want. Next up, we want to start adding some stuff to this to make it look more interesting. I'm just gonna pre-comp these, Control shift c and I'm gonna name this base level crap. This is gonna be sub-comp, so it's gonna be three, but really, I it really should have been two. Now I'm just confusing um, because one and two and then well, three is inside of two. It's very confusing. Um, I probably shouldn't have named it that, but anyways, it doesn't matter. We're fine. Um, I'm gonna create a layer new solid and that's fine. And I am going to add a ramp. Now I could add a ramp two ways. I could select this file. I could have um, created a shape. Oops, not some mask. I could have created the shape come and add a fill, but instead of, I could have chose kind of a linear fill. I could have chosen, chosen the colors. Honestly, that's really just not a very fun process to do. So I just add ramp. I prefer just using the ramp tool because it generally works better. The only thing is you don't get an alpha layer, which that's the only time I'll ever use the other type of ramp. So I am going to select this. I'm gonna name this ramp underscore background. And I don't really need to change that. I will make my first color. I like using blues, but um, blue and blues and greens, but you could obviously use any color that you want that is pretty dark um, or pretty fluorescent, but hopefully some of the other things we do later will change that. Firstly, a layer, 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 new <laughs> adjustment layer. For some reason, the comp wasn't selected and if you add a noise, this is all still, by the way, from Erica. If you add a noise here, set this to like something like 20, and then change the blending mode to overlay, it should make it darker. Let's see. Huh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know, scratch that. Um, I'm just gonna make these colors darker. Hmm, this is tough. Okay, I'm just gonna go with blue because I think that that looks pretty cool. I think she added like vignettes. She adds a bunch of other kind of post processing to make it look um, vintagey, which I think looks awesome. Um, I'll do the things that I normally do. Hers are, are kind of proprietary and I don't want to show all of her techniques out, but they are very similar to this. So it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But on this base layer, I'm just gonna hit P on the keyboard and set a keyframe holding Alt for position and set this to wiggle 25 and then one. So this will add a little bit of, of wiggle to the position of that. I'm gonna change this back to normal, I think. No, actually I like to overlay the best. So maybe I just increase the noise. I just want more noise. Okay, and I'm gonna now create a layer new adjustment layer, put it on top, but I want it underneath the noise. And I'm gonna add a glow. So this is how you get the glistening effect, which is totally a brilliant way of doing this. And I can't believe I didn't know how to do this before. So under the glow dimensions, if you change this to just horizontal, you can actually, whoa, that's pretty crazy. Um, let's actually put the glow on the base value. I think that that ramp is like messing it up, but um, let's set one to horizontal. And 
and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to set the other one to vertical. And wow, look at that. You now you have glistening, glistening layers. Now this is happening kind of way too fast for me. So I'm going to come back to our base. That's like happening way too fast. 20 minutes later. Okay, so I just spent the better half of like 25 minutes adjusting all of the settings here to try to get it to not be so fast. And what it turns out is it's just not going to happen. I'm going to have to use a time remap, which is fine. I, in the process, I adjusted all of the settings for gravity, for everything. I even adjust the colors on the ramp. The idea is pretty simple though. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna show you 25 minutes of me messing around here. If you're curious, I might put the settings that I'm gonna use in the final one down below in the comments. But anyways, let's just go ahead and jump back in. Right clicking the base and go to time, enable time remapping and just drag this out to three seconds. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just stretching that composition to last longer. And that kind of solves the problem. Um, I also adjusted these colors here, which I'm still not quite happy about but I think that that looks pretty cool obviously you can come in here and 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 adjust this all to your heart's content anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to give this video a like subscribe check out other videos on this channel and of course go check out Erica Vanderson anyways guys thanks for watching